let's bring on our first team of the evening, and that's going to be team number 3506, Yeti Robotics, coming in from Charlotte, North Carolina. Last time we had Lance on, Lance, he brought a couple of your teammates on uh, as well today. So why don't you introduce yourself once again? Let us know what you do on the team. Hi, uh, I'm Lance. Uh, I'm the team captain, and this is the rest of my team. <laughs> Bob. Okay. Um, introduce yourselves. Yep. Uh, my name is Pavin, and um, I'm the mechanical lead uh, for Yeti, and uh, this is my third year on the team. Hi, um, this is, my name is Varun. Uh, this is my first year on the team, and I'm our uh, like assistant programming lead. Well, folks, if you're okay. watching live in chat, by the way, if you have any questions for this team, post that in our Twitch chat there. We'd love to take a couple questions that we can do live. And, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you can comment in the YouTube comments, and we'll get back to this as well. And I'm sorry, Lance, you guys have done tremendous progress over the last few weeks. Run us through what's been going on with your team. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So over the past couple of weeks, we've uh, really started to transition from prototyping to getting all of our ideas um, fully catted. Um, so we have a, a top level and a, and a very a very accurate or, or rough I guess rough rough idea of what our robot's going to look like. Um, so if you, if you see on the screen, uh, this is what our top level top level assembly is going to look like. Uh, so we have a shooter, an intake, a neck, and a climber, and a locking system for that climber. Uh, we will d dive into all these systems later on, but we're going to start off with um, our shooter and neck. Um, prototyping, or, or I, should, I should say, catting and building, because we have them all built. Um, our shooter here. So we'll start with the shooter. Pavin. Oop. Shooter. Gone. Shooter. Okay, so this is one of our robots called um, Stumpy. Um, it's really just a drive base that we let, um, or that we have programmers. Um, make our make our prototypes come alive with but that um our shooter on top is something that we have brought fully to life that's what that's what will be put on our competition robot or we'd like to we don't use the d word done but um it is it's very far along in its in this process right now um i know Pavan was working on that so he can he can shed a little more light in on that um, yeah, I think uh, the shooter is um, definitely one of the strong points of our robot because it was one of the um, first things that we actually finished. Um, so we got that thing on our um, little prototype um, drivetrain. Uh, we call it Stumpy. Um, like very early on in the season, I think we had it on by like the end of week, week one. I mean, we had it on like ASAP. Um, and I think that with the shooting, there's a lot of like coding and programming involved. And that's why like getting it on the drivetrain um, as fast as possible and um, getting our programming team that opportunity to really get to work with it really early um, allowed us for, allowed them to like kind of set up seeing what our strategy is going to be going into autonomous, where our viable um, areas that we can um, successfully score from. And um, yeah, I mean, this shooter, uh, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, I think it like in all of our videos, um, you can you can see how it works, but it's basically just a single flywheel shooter with a hood in the back. Um, uh, this year, uh, last year, um, we went with a or in 2020 we went with an adjustable hood, um, but this year we just have a um, stationary hood. And um, I mean, it's running. It runs on two Falcons, really powerful. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and it's also on a turret, which allows it to um, and, move around. And, and Varun, uh, what has uh, programming done? Uh, to to hone our our accuracy in yeah so uh, like Pavan was saying so our shooter this year um, it's taking like a lot of programming to make it do exactly what we want so one thing that we've implemented this year is uh, PID which is um, basically proportion integral derivative and it uses uh, calculus to figure out the uh, RPM that a flywheel should spin at to launch a ball at a certain velocity and uh, by doing that we can basically um, launch a ball into the correct spot every single time we shoot. And so um, the controls team has been uh, spending most of our time recently working on the PID um, to make sure that we're we're hitting the target every time. And um, 
yeah, we're nearly complete with that. Um, just a few more bugs to iron out, and we should be able to uh, get in the high goal every single shot. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, All right. So I have a couple yeah. questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So here's a couple questions. So um, so awesome job. I mean, it looks like your shooter is really well tuned in. Um, but here's a couple questions. So from a strategy perspective, um, where are you trying to shoot from with this shooter? So you talk about a single single back hood. What's your what's your range that you're trying to shoot from? So um, our shooter has we have multiple spots that we can actually shoot from. Um, um, uh, Varun, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're planning on on lowering the RPM of our flywheel to be able to shoot into the logo, and um, and we're we're looking for more of um, the back of the, of the starting area. Yep, that's right. Okay, so uh, mid, so mid, midfield, so not not the fender right. shot, but more Correct. of like on the back starting line shot and staying in the perimeter. And Correct. that's a, another like advantage that PID provides us because literally by tweaking like one value in one Java program. We can uh, change where we're shooting from if it becomes more advantageous at whatever point in the season. Okay, and then um, with the tracking that you're doing on the on the top um, with the limelight, are you real time tracking? So, like, is the turret going to stay fixed on the goal at all times throughout it? Um, like, does it go full 360 around, or is it going to be more of like, hey, I'm ready to shoot, driver, hold the button, and then it makes adjustments? Yeah, so um, we're planning on um, having the limelight there, and then. Our drivers are going to get it into the general vicinity. We'll have a driver cam, and then um, our like our secondary button operator can press one button, and then the turret will align uh, exactly with the uh, goal. Awesome. I want to take a quick question or a quick comment that came in from chat. Uh, Kagos Re uh, saying, "Interesting how you mounted the limelight on the back." Do you mind just commenting a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, our, our thoughts were, um, our limelight w would be on the on the back and above everything. Uh, especially because we didn't want to have to look over our shooter or, or um, yeah, th th that was really our main our main thought process on why we mounted it on the back and sure. and so and, and above everything. Do do you do you have any concerns that the ball that you're shooting will block the limelight for the second ball shot, or do you think that your shooting is quick enough that it doesn't it won't matter? Um, so far we haven't run into issue uh, run into any issues with that yet, but I think. I think that's exactly what we thought, yeah. Well, walk us through more on your robot. Obviously, lots more to go uh, past the shooter as well. Love to hear about uh, intake climber, uh, indexing, all the fun stuff that goes into that too. Yeah, so um, our yeah, so we actually have a video. I believe I sent it to you. Let me just pull that up real quick. Um, I got it here. Pull it up, man. Come on. All right, here. Okay, do you mind telling us a little bit more about what's going on with the video? Yeah. So, so describe to us a little bit more what's going on with the video that we're seeing right now. Yeah. So, um, so we, uh, la uh, tw in our 2020 and 2021 years, we had an issue with our balls, um, uh, prematurely firing or either getting stuck. And then something that we wanted to stop was um, uh, was was that issue exactly. So what we ended up uh, thinking about doing and, and doing is um, installing a beam a beam brake sensor. So anything so as soon as that beam brake sensor is uh, is broken um, by a ball, um, the, the the neck rollers will will, will stop. Here I'll actually get get to a shot where that's visible. There we go. The, the neck rollers will actually stop moving. So. Uh, so that allows us to continuously intake balls, but not have them, but not have them get stuck in our shooter or just below our shooter. Um, I think Lance summed it up pretty well. Uh, yeah, we've been using the beam brake essentially to regulate our shots. Yeah, um, if you saw in the video, it uh, like we run the intake at full speed and the, the balls go up right before the shooter and then they, they just stop before going into the shooter. Um, that allows us to have more precise control over okay. when we want yeah. to how many, how many motors do you have in your intake and conveyance system? So like when it, it goes in and hits yeah. the beam brake, do you have 
Like, is it separated by one motor, two motors, three motors in your whole system? So How many zones do you have? Uh, in this specific one, uh, we have for our neck, which is uh, the area that moves the bolts from the intake to our shooter. Um, that that um that has has two motors, but they operate um they operate together. So one motor will not operate separately from another. And for intake, we are only using one motor, which will most likely be a Falcon. Okay. I think. Let me. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, so when you're saying, so you bring the intake in, it bring comes into the neck area. The, the beam brake stops things. So. You basically have one ball that's in kind of the neck area and then your intake can still spin. So when you want to shoot, you'll have one ball that's queued up like right behind your intake and one ball that's completely in the neck position ready to shoot, right? Exactly. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is our, is our drivetrain. We actually did switch our ratio. I remember um, telling you guys uh, last time I was on that we're mm -hmm. going to be a pretty, a relatively fast robot. Um, don't worry, we're still pretty fast, but we just um we saw some issues with acceleration. So here I'm gonna pull up our iLight. Yeah. Ah, okay. you, the iLight calculator. Yes, our iLight calculator. Um, so our acceleration distance, uh, we, I I was initially calculating it for, uh, or we were initially calculating it for half the field, so tw so 27 feet, or yeah, 27 feet. Um, and now uh, that's been reduced to 19.6 uh, feet. Uh, or just 20 feet um but i'm just trying to find it yes okay yeah so um our our uh our real speed is 19 feet per second which it isn't it's still it's, it's definitely it's still pretty fast yeah it's, it's still really it's fast, still pretty <laughs> fast. Um, but it's it's still relatively fast which we're happy about but our but our low gear is something that we really like it's very it has a lot of torque in it something that that we that we like having um our drive base however that has not changed at all um if i can pull that up so uh we are we did however make a new bumper bumper system i forget which team we modeled it off of but there was a really helpful chief thread that uh that, that we modeled ours off of but we're still at um, a six-wheel tank drive with no drop center, with uh, two Omni in the front, um, and we're going to be powered by two Falcons on that one. Um, what else? What else? So we only have a couple minutes left too. So I just want okay. to make sure if there's anything else um, uh, from yeah. sides that maybe we haven't covered yet that you want to dive a bit more into yeah. uh, on your robot or talk about next steps or anything like that. So, uh, yeah. So here I'll, I'll touch on our climber real quick, and yeah. then we'll. Uh, so our climber is something that I'm I've really been focusing on myself. Um, we in our twenty in our twenty twenty one off season we actually spent a lot of uh, time and energy on developing a climber system that will work, uh, or a climber design that'll work. So I I took that design and I really just like kind of made it its own thing for this game, um, which is really nice. So the bottom plates uh, that we see down there are actually machined out of quarter uh, quarter inch aluminum. Um, I think we have more detailed photos if I can just grab that real quick here. Yeah. And if you want to see what he's talking about too, you can go right on chief Delphi. These, uh, many of the open alliance teams have a pretty active build thread. So make sure you check out 3506's build thread. So you can see more, uh, in detail, uh, more than the brief overview that we're doing right now too. Yeah. So th this, this shot here open. Okay. Oh, well, uh, that shot here is actually directly off of our, our, uh, 2021 robot, but it's, it's a custom ge uh, gearbox. Um, it's our, actually our first, as as our lead mentor Robbie posts in this in this photo, it's our first fully custom me metal gearbox. Um, something that we're really proud of. Um, in in scrap and um, Doyen, if if you were there, you would you would know that we had extreme success with it for it being very reliable and very fast. So that's something that we're really um, that we're really aiming for uh, to replicate this year. But here's actually what ours looks like in CAD right now. Um, um, but for our locking system, so we're going for a high, and our best bet is at this point it's a stretch, but maybe traverse, um, but but def definitely high at the very lowest. Um, but our locking system that will actually um, keep us on the bar or on, on the mid bar. Can't find it, but um, it's basically two hooks that operate like carabiners except for the fact that it doesn't lock us onto the bar. It just, it just pops up two hooks for us. 
Um, that's still, that has been under um, a lot of iterations. Um, we still don't have something that's, that, that quite works yet, but we're really, we're, we're going for it. Um, it's something that, that we're really, really happy, happy to work out. Yeah. And, and I think that you guys are on the right track with that because, you know, it looks like your shooter and your intake and your conveyor and your drivetrain and everything is really solid right now. And I think that that's like, obviously those, the, the hang is really important, but I think that from an iteration as the season progresses, um, you'll see a lot of teams iterate their climb, especially when you start seeing as other teams are doing, but having, trying to change your intake, your conveyor and your shooter is a lot harder of a challenge than, you know, iterating on your climb. So I think you right. guys are off to a really uh, great start and it's been awesome to see your progress um, from, you know, a few weeks ago when we first checked in with you guys. It's been great to share it with you guys. Um, I, I, I know that um, Varun, do you want to touch on Pathweaver at all? Sure. So yeah, um, Pathweaver, we've been uh, using it to basically map a course um, across the field, if you're familiar with the software. And um, so far we've, uh, we actually ran into some problems, but we've uh, encountered some recent success. Uh, we were able to, we were having some gyro issues earlier. Uh, we're still having a bit of gyro issue, but um, we've been able to make it drive and uh, follow some of our paths. So um, hopefully uh, in this week, as soon as our new gyro gets here, uh, we'll be able to hit the ground running and then uh, we'll have our paths going for autonomous by the end of the week. Love to see some demonstrations of that too, uh, once either, both virtually, you know, actually showing it and then uh, as well, live as well too. So super cool. Uh, anything else on your guys' robot that we want to touch on before we wrap up? Uh, I, think, I think that's everything. Awesome. Well, 3506 Yeti Robotics, once again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come on. It's great to see your progress. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll be announcing something soon, so hopefully we'll be checking in just a couple more weeks uh, with your team and let's see where you've gone so far as you come up to uh, your first event, which is a week three event. So you got a couple more weeks still to go, but I know uh, you'll get something uh, fully completed quite soon. So can't wait to see more of that. Thanks a lot for taking the time, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.